Hello, everyone, and welcome to Classical Revolution here on Idagio. My name is Rachel Fenlon, and this is my weekly series in which I get to chat with guests in the classical music world, people who inspire me, people who are pushing boundaries in classical music, and I get to speak to them about what inspires them, what fuels their pushing boundaries and thinking outside the box. Today, I'm thrilled to be joined by Arash Zafayan, an award-winning artist, composer, and producer. Arash has been commissioned by some of the most prestigious orchestras, ensembles, and festivals. He's a recording artist with Neue Meister, Deutsche Grammophon, and modern recordings. And the broad spectrum of his work spans from opera to chamber music, to orchestral music, concerti, and a lot of film music. It's a real pleasure to have him on the show today. And please welcome Arash Zafayan. Hi, Arash. Hi, Rachel. Hi. Thanks for having so me. So nice to have you, you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Arash, I'd love to begin by asking you what your earliest introductions to music were and whether there are specific musical memories that jump out to you. Uh, that's an interesting question because I cannot say it exactly. As far as I can remember, it was Beethoven and it was Beethoven Violin Concerto and Beethoven Third Piano Concerto. It was a recording of Sjotoslav Richter. And um, these were recordings I were listening. It, it was the time where the first CDs were coming out. It was end of the beginning of the 90s, I think, or end of the 80s, or I think it was end of the 80s or something. And um, there were CD shops, but there were not many CDs there. and. Um, we had much cassettes, but but I can remember mostly the CDs and and uh, I was really touched by this music and um, about the force of Beethoven and um, it, it it and then Beethoven became the hero of my childhood in a way and <laughs> and it was that strong that I stopped listening it when I grew older because. It was more a remembering something. It was more a memory. It, it was it, it was not music anymore. It was more memory of childhood to me. And uh, yeah, I think that's the first uh, uh, images I have about uh, my first. Um, yeah, how can I say? Uh, touch with music I had. Mm -hmm. I I think this is that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I read. I read that you grew up in Bayreuth and that you went to the opera a lot when you were younger. Yeah, it um, was it was a, a, a bit later. Um, okay. um, when I came to Germany, I was in a small town. It's called Pignitz. It's around twenty kilometers away from Bayreuth, and um, and then I uh, uh, went to the music school there in Germany. We call it Gymnasium, and uh, mm -hmm. it was especially just for music and. Um, and there uh, I had the chance then every year to go to the Bayreuther Festspiele and, and um, go to the uh, general rehearsals. And, um, and um, it was really great because I had the chance to listen to all the Wagner operas. Uh, uh, except Rienzi, because they are not playing this there. Uh, <laughs> but but um, uh, all the other famous stuff I heard, and um, with the great conductors and uh, great productions with Bullies and uh, Schlingensief and all this stuff, and was really quite an interesting time. The old Mr. Wagner was there and stopping the rehearsals also, and um, screaming when and people wanted to clap and, um, and it was really interesting yeah and um, yeah w w great memories yeah <laughs> <laughs> wow those are some amazing memories to have from from such an early yeah yeah, age. yeah, yeah. it was really great so at one time I slept even I was I had a good ticket and I was uh, next to the director and I was sleeping and the seats are of, of wood and then I was falling down and it made a really bing bang during the uh, 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 the performance, and everybody was looking to my side, and I behaved like nothing is happening here, or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, great stuff happened there. Yeah. Oh, I love yeah. it. 
<laughs> yeah. At Ash, your body of work, it, it's so broad, as I was saying in the introduction, you know, you, you write opera, you write orchestra. I was listening to some of your piano, con like piano concerti work today and, mm. and you write for film. And, and I think it's especially unique, um, your work for film. I think all of it's especially unique, but I, I would love to chat with you a bit about your work as a film composer. Mm. Um, because it's such a different beast. And uh, so I, yeah. how, first, first off, how is it different for you as a composer when, when you're sort of given this film project? How, what's different in the beginning process for you as a composer? The most thing about film for me is, is um, to find the right director. Um, hmm. um, because the director um, has to trust you and uh, believe in you and believe in your music. And um, that's for me the most important. When a director comes to me and uh, doesn't know anything about my music, it makes no sense to work with him because then it's just a job. And that's not the kind of film music I, I, uh, I like to do. I like to do write invent music out of the movie but with my language for the movie and um, I think that's the most difficult approach and I'm, I'm quite lucky that I found some directors who are trusting me and uh, are open enough and then it's 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 really an interesting work because you you have to, you have to make a um, yeah, how can I say a metamorphosis with the director? You have to become himself, and and often I like when they are sitting here in my studio and uh, we are watching the movie, and then I'm going to the piano and playing, and then they say ah like this or like that, and then I'm inventing. And I have to say, sometimes it's even the first session I'm doing. It's the film music. It's it's directly the stuff I'm inventing in the moment. It's it's becoming the music of the movie. And then they fall so much in love. They don't want any changes anymore, and they just want to keep with the first image and first sound they had. They want to keep it, and that's also difficult. But I think the most important is, is the connection with the director you have. You need a really strong connection and a personal connection. You need to go out with them. You need to talk to them. You need to, you, you, you need to find out what, what mood they have and what kind of person they are to, to, to find the right language for them. Because it's, not, it's my language, it's, it's my tools, but it's also it's also their language and I have to adapt to their language, to their vision. And, and, yeah. and I have to find a way to formulate it for them. And um, that's sometimes tough, but it's, it's, it's also big fun. And, yeah. um, and um, it's a different approach. And, um, but I like it. I like it because, um, and images, uh, movies are images which are moving, and, and music is also movement. It's always time. It's it's an art of time, and, um, and there are so many connections. For me, it's even sometimes like a ballet. I'm 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 watching a movie, and it's for me a choreography. How the people moving uh, <laughs> during the time, how the cuts are, when somebody is coming in, when he's standing, and when he's moving away. And it's a kind of choreography, you know, and also how the, the camera guy is doing the setting. It's like the opera stage. You have the stage and how it's, how the people are dressed, how the lightning is. Is the color more blue or yellow? Uh, is it dark? And why is it there dark? And why there is much more light there? And all this stuff, it has much stuff to do with opera and, um, and um, how the tempo of talking is. And, and when you connect all these uh, elements together, you find out it's quite close to opera and music and ballet and all this stuff. It's coming from this. And um, the more aware a uh, director is about all these uh, small elements, the better the movie is. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I also find it particularly beautiful what you say. It's about two languages coming together that sort of the language of the, yeah. the director and your language. I've never thought about that before. That's yeah, and I have to say, the, uh, movies. When I'm getting a movie, I'm, 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 
often getting the movie in the with the book i'm only reading the book and okay. it's really much different than reading a libretto of an opera because yeah. it's it's, it's yes. a different language it's it's more um, sometimes it's just more you know just like we talk and um, exactly. and and um it's more brief and um but then then when they're filming and after the first cuts are there, you, you, you're getting an image. And then there is a point, you have the picture lock. It's called, it's the final picture. Every frame is locked and every cut is locked. And when the movie is working without music, then you have a good movie. <laughs> uh, a movie is, is always good when you can watch it and you're not getting bored when there is no music on it. That's, wow. a, that's a perfect uh, movie because then you have the chance to make really good music because the mm -hmm. music does not need to help the images to uh, enforce emotions or uh, make stuff out where something is not. Um, then the music has, has a place and is just a, a form of you know, um, a hidden language or, a, or, the, or a, 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 a ghost actor or the soul of the movie. A subconscious. Or... Yeah, exactly. It's, it's the mm -hmm. taste. Uh, it's, it's for me like, mm -hmm. uh, if you compare it with, with food, if you are making a salad, yeah, you have good ingredients. Uh, and if the tomato is tasting good and the salad is tasting good and all the ingredients are good, it's, it's, you can eat it. And then I'm just putting the sauce on it. And it's like oh. to, 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 to put everything together in a way, you know? Yeah. And, um, um, but the ingredients have to be good. And, um, yes. yeah. and, and that, that's the challenge. Um, um, with the movies and and it's 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 a tough tough way to find the right movies i think the most uh, the toughest part of making film music is uh, finding the right movie to make music on and um, that's the toughest part of it and but when you have it then it's big fun yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh it's so interesting um, a recent project of yours, which I was listening to today, is this, um, This Is Not Beethoven. And yeah. it's, it's a fabulous uh, album. And, and for everyone watching, you can watch it or listen to it on iDagio. Um, and what, what's, of course, I, I had to ask you about it because it's, it's very, it's interesting because you're sort of recomposing or transcribing Beethoven with your, with your voice. And what I'm, my question for you is, what do you get to explore differently as a composer in this, um, in this kind of relationship with Beethoven? I mean, what's exciting for you about this project? I did two projects like this, as you know, one is yes, Bach awesome. and one is uh, Beethoven. And we have this term now um, since 10 years, it's called recomposed. I don't like yeah. this term because the, in my opinion, there is no recomposing. For me, music mm -hmm. is, um, is like material. To um, to come again to this uh, to this picture with food, you know, it's it's like you're a cook, and um, the ingredients of the world. This is the music, you know, everything which is existing. Somebody put it there together. Somebody put it in this way together, and it's all around. And 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 I'm just taking the part for me and making something out of me and expressing it on my way but it's it, music is just uh, the existence of the people it's it's the the language of the of their existence and of their time but it's in the end it's material it's like for me it's like stones or forests <laughs> and it's just a form of existence and mm. it's 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 soul material and this soul material um i'm i i I got the uh, the commission to to think about this material of Beethoven and uh, and it's 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 it was really tough to start with it and 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 to compose the music because I as I said uh, Beethoven was really something important in my life and um, um, meant so much to me and um, and I needed to 
find a big distance to it, to mm. go in a big distance to, to see Beethoven with other eyes and see it as material and see it um, not mm. in a historical perspective, not thinking about the Beethoven as a giant and yes. just seeing Beethoven. Or even your as own a human, personal as, love as, as, a, as, as, a, as a human, yeah. And um, yeah. To, to remove all these historical aspects, also my personal historical aspects, and, um, mm. and behave like a child who is, um, doesn't know anything about it and hears it the first time. And um, with this naive approach, I, um, I try to start to compose and get inspired by it. And, and, and it's, it, uh, this piece is called This Is Not Beethoven because um, it's, it's, it's just are some really few themes of Beethoven inside. It's really not much Beethoven inside, but everybody is recognizing the Beethoven part. Well, because that's the, so famous. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and um, uh, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and and I think that's the great thing out of about Beethoven because his his language is that strong that he has you can take eight bars out and then make music out of it and 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 make fantasies out of it and and dream more out of it and and go to another worlds with it and 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 find a new cosmos mm -hmm. and um that's for me the point of creativity it's just um i own nothing you know i own nothing of my music and i think beethoven owns also nothing out of his music and mozart and i think we are just just combining we are just combining what we heard and, and, and um, also the words I'm talking to you, they are not mine. Um, people invented them and I'm just putting them together and so we can talk to each other. And um, yeah, and um, that's why it's called, this is not Beethoven, but with much love, you know, it's called, this is not <laughs> Beethoven, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it's called Beethoven Variations. This was only the title. Uh, oh, the, yes. the, the, oh, the marketing was putting on it because it's a little bit more provocative, but I liked it because it's 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 we have to understand that that tradition is 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 is, uh, is a form of giving to the next generation, and the next generation is giving it also. Tradition is nothing which is uh, dead or uh, has an end um it's 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 just development it's human evolution yes. i yeah. love that i love mm. that a form of giving yeah. Mm. yeah yeah well and what's cool about the title too is that the knot is in brackets so you can kind of interpret it how you want you know it's, no, yeah, it's, it's good you say this some some people don't like the brackets oh, oh. <laughs> there's a big controversy about the brackets okay, okay. yeah <laughs> <laughs> It was a big discussion if we should put the brackets or not the brackets. It was a okay. big I mean, discussion, I can imagine. but I like that. It's a big discussion. It shows so we, uh, a discussion is always good. I there think so is uh, yeah. no right or wrong. <laughs> no, and it's good to always um, evoke some some strong feelings. Mm. Um, Arash, I'm curious for you as a composer. I mean. For me, the the uh, the role of a composer, it's because I'm not one. <laughs> it seems so. There's something so almost hmm, um, magical about it because you're you're sort of dealing with material that doesn't exist and, and creating something and putting sound into time. Um, and I guess I'm wondering for you, in terms of being open creatively, how important is inspiration for you? Um, do you, is that something that is important for you as part of your creative process? What is inspiration for you? I think inspiration, this is a good question because um, there, there are different types of composers. I think there are composers like Stra Stravinsky who were just sitting directly there and they could directly write something and it, they were not waiting for inspiration. And then there are composers like Puccini who were sitting there and then something is coming from heaven and, and when it's not coming, nothing is happening. And um, 
for me, um, how can I say? Uh, um, uh, inspiration is um, the feeling of passion. And uh, we say in German, Lust. How we can say this? Lust. Um, uh, what could mm, it be in English? Not like Lustig, but mm, yeah, it's, I mean. It's, it's the feeling of wanting something, loving something, and, and being hungry for something. Yeah. And lust, uh, even. Lust, yeah. Yeah, even, yeah. Look. Um, yeah. Uh, and I think this is. Um, and and it's the, the, the we understand always inspiration as a form that you hear something and you're getting inspired by and then you produce something out of it that's one part mm -hmm. but um you can live also an inspired life and um and 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 that's the most interesting thing about it this is what this is the job of an artist is to live an inspired life to be um, to be fast enough during the life you live when you walk around to be fast enough to recognize beauty to understand to see stuff which could which other people don't see anymore to be open enough to receive the world and um, and create a feeling about it to, 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 to be every moment inspired. And that's the hard challenge about it because you're not feeling every day open enough. And, um, and it's not about, one has not to think it's, it's, I'm, it's for me not like I'm, I want to get inspired and then I'm going in to Idaggio and then I'm listening all the different music and then I say, ah, this is inspiring. Okay, let's try this stuff like it's not like this it's yeah. it's i'm i'm listening not much music to get inspired when i want to compose i'm 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 i i, I think i'm really my my listening amount is going to zero then mm -hmm. um be because it's more distracting and um it's more um there are too many other aspects are coming in but for me, the most important is about being an artist is, 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 is the everyday life, how you wake up, how you're feeling, how you're dealing with your people, how you're walking around and how you see the world and um, where you can uh, always to be in search for uh, um, beauty. And, and, and beauty is a really important aspect for, for me in, in, uh, because um, I'm growing in a family where everything is about beauty painting and literature and everything. But I realized that beauty is not the, the term we understand with beauty. I, something is beautiful. It's, it's beauty is a form of truth and, and uh, understanding the truth. And if you understand the truth, then a feeling of beauty is coming in. It's beauty is, is like knowing something without knowing what. And, um, and, um, and that's the challenge every day to find out how this is working. For example, in this situation, we are every day now, many people have Corona sitting at home and longing for being together and finding out what can be the beauty of this moment, even in hard times. This is also, this is, this is a big inspiration for art mm -hmm. and, um, Every situation uh, you live in a way, and even if it's hard, it's, it's, it's a form of gift. That, and it's really hard to understand or accept this, mm -hmm. but this is the work of getting inspired for me. Hmm. Wow. Hmm. And on this idea of beauty as truth, is it that, is it that because beauty is can be so purely received is that the truth element of why beauty i think i think that it's it's very philosophical mm -hmm. but um truth is for me something like a sculpture um, you can view it from one point because you just can stand on one side and view the sculpture from one side and Another person can on, only view it from another point and from one side, but the truth means has 
four dimensions. It has, you can walk around. It's not one-sided. And beauty is to get a glimpse also of the other side during standing on the other side. It's, 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 it's breaking out of the dimensions. And this is the form of beauty. The simple beauty is what we understand. There are beautiful colors, beautiful music, mm. but especially with music. And that's the strong aspect of music because music is multidimensional. It's not one dimension. It's, it's you hear, if you hear a Bach piece, you have a counterpoint of eight, nine voices and it's information directly from many aspects. So you hear, especially with Bach, you hear many dimensions of one, one subject of music. And then you, and, and how you receive it, it's not in one dimensions, you receive it in so many dimensions. So your brain cannot take it other than with emotions. And then you are feeling touched. And that's the form of, of understanding. And then this is why I mean, you understand something, but you don't know what. And that's the deepness of music for me. And um, mm, yes. And um, this is when I'm always, when I'm, uh, there is so much beautiful music, which is really in a simple dimension and, and has not, uh, the deepness inside and this doesn't mean it has to be complicated don't get me wrong you know it's not about you know if you hear uh, Bach uh, first preludium it's not a complicated piece <laughs> but it's 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 there are many dimensions of of what he wants to tell us or what he feels or what his aim is or even stronger about He's what his expression of his being is in this moment. And um, the great composers, and, and that's their talent, is they were really, had a really that strong gift to formulate their time and their being so strongly that we get a glimpse of truth. And this is what makes us getting touched. And um, I think that's the difference between good and bad music. And it's not about classical pop or rock music. It, it, it has nothing to do with all these genres and all these mm -hmm. things. It's about uh, how, how strong the expression of a composer is. And, um, yeah. and when, uh, when you listen, for example, Bob Dylan, some songs of him and uh, you hear the words and the simple chords under it. There are many dimensions in, in what he's doing, how he's expressing it, how he's singing it, what words he's combining with which harmony, even this harmony is not complicated, but it gives you a feeling of this man in this moment when he, were, he was writing it or what he aimed. And then you cannot understand it in another way than emotional. And this yeah. is the glimpse of truth. And this is for me beauty. Beautiful. Mm. Mm. Um, I know that you studied also as a painter um, mm. and your father's a painter as well and yeah. uh, an important figure in this um, Iranian modernism. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm curious how that background, how your own relationship with painting, how does that manifest in your work as a composer? Um, you know, are you dealing with sort of visual elements for you, like color and texture? And I'm, I'm just curious about that because you must have a very strong relationship with, with image as well. Yeah, I have a really strong relationship with images and um, because I'm growing up always in an atelier and I, I, was, um, I was always in his studio and painting and then <laughs> um, I think a big part of my life, I was only dealing with painting and, and colors and uh, compositions in, in a frame and with sculptures and thinking about what is the best form of arrangement and going to exhibitions and all of, all, all of this stuff. It's, it's, it was not so much music. Music was more the emotional part, but it was not so analytical with music. I was much more analytical with painting and colors and 
the different uh, shades of yellow and red and uh, and uh, how you combine this red with this yellow and and how you arrange a painting in this way and and then and, and thinking about what he's painting the next thing and 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 then criticizing it and and fighting about this is good or this is bad and 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 then you build sure your brain is building a a, a form of thinking in an in visual forms and i think it it it's it, it, it's it 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 um it has something to do with my music too yeah i i you know when i'm uh, hearing music and that's quite a problem is um i'm always seeing the music like um you know it um uh, if you've seen this midi uh, there are oh, there yeah. are these MIDI videos. You know, you, yeah. you have this MIDI video, do, 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 and yeah. then you see the different lines. And when I'm hearing music, it's always it's it's like jumping lights. It's that 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 da. I see the the mm. different pitches coming, do, 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 yeah. do, 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 and it's quite distracting sometimes. And mm. um, the the less I like the music, the more I see these bubbles in my head. <laughs> and uh, and this, this, <laughs> yeah. uh, and the more I like the music, the, 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 the more I can get lost of it, you know, and, and, um, and when I'm composing music, I'm composing very often, just like when I'm walking around, or I'm sitting in the bus or in the train, and I'm, and I'm thinking about this, you know, different bubbles, da, 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 di, 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 di. and they're coming in the moment, and then I'm combining them again, and then I'm combining them again, it's, it's not the sheet, it's just these bubbles. And, um, and um, yeah, and I think that's maybe the, the visual aspect. I see the, I can say, yeah. I, I see really the music when I'm hearing music, I see it when I'm closing my eyes in a way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, talking about, you know, color and texture, something I was, I was really amazed by in discovering you as a composer is your harmonic language. Um, so you have like a, 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 quite a huge harmonic depth, I would say. And I think this is quite rare for kind of new music um, of today. And I was wondering if you could just talk a little bit about your philosophy on harmony and, and how, that, how that goes for you in this sort of what we would say new music um, era where there's sort of a distance to harmony as well. Um, I think, um, for me, harmony is, is, um, the grammar of music. It's the grammar is like, um, how I put the small elements of a sentence together to express, uh, uh to, to put a meaning into a sentence and, um, Harmony was always in my music of very importance. And um, um, Harmony had a, a difficult position in the last uh, century and um, it had hard times, but I have, I have to say, I think Harmony is coming back and yeah. um, wants to come back because people want it back and the expression of the time wants it back. And um, I think it was important that we had a time without harmony or less harmony or a different approach of harmony. In a way, we lost the language to win over other aspects of music, but now we need to get this grammar back because we want, we, I just want, I, I don't want the music to be just framed in an, academic um, festival world or uh, not being free into the society. I think it's, it's, it's really important because music is the soul of a society in a way. It's, 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 it's expressing um, the feeling and the existence of a time. And when we lose the grammar, it's a big problem. And um, in, my, in my world, 
uh, how I see the world, it's 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 a bit different because I I approached music um, in a I think from a from a world view of of a of an Asian boy. You know, I'm I'm coming from Iran and um, the the the. Uh, the, the way art is expressed in, in the Asian world is a less technical uh, approach than we have we had it in the 20th century in, in Europe. And uh, for me, the technical aspect and the emotional aspect are the same quality. It's, it's, it's I have the same importance. And um, that's why the harmony was always something of uh, big importance. And then I have to say, I, um, how I'm thinking very much, I talked about these bubbles in my head and is I'm thinking really much out of the general bus, out of the general bus of the, of the, uh, out of the Baroque music. I'm not thinking about um, with, uh, with harmonies like you have tonical and dominance and stuff. I, I'm not thinking like this. I'm really thinking like, a baroque composer you know like with numbers and 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 um, i i played a, uh, quite a long time of my life i played first of all bach and um, especially much general bass i just played really often general bass so i have this way of thinking in general bass Mm -hmm. think about six, 13 uh, and the coins mm -hmm. five and blah 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 and I see these numbers and I'm really really like really fluent in, in the uh, general was thinking mm -hmm. and um, and um, this is this 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 is a kind of um, became kind of a grammar for me and um, and um, and and it's a tool to find a more I think for me, a more precise way of expressing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and also when you think about, you know, harmony, you, when you think about the teorbe or all these Baroque instruments, um, the way of their, how you are uh, getting the, uh, building chords on these mm -hmm. instruments. You, and when you analyze how Monteverdi was composing his music, you understand it's, really quite close to how he, these instruments are played and and um, and um, and then you realize ah okay his this instrument were built out of a form of expression which was necessary during this time yes. and 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 this necessity made this harmony so there is yeah. there is this technical aspect and this emotional aspect and coming together in an instrument and then we have this beautiful mm -hmm. baroque music we are we have we have so many great baroque ensembles and and uh, and um, we can f find out so many different shades of baroque music and and you see it's so much connected to each other and I mean, we um, can say the same about about the piano as well a piano absolutely it's absolutely, the perfect absolutely. example also absolutely you know? absolutely yeah. exactly yeah and um and um i think it's 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 for 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 the coming um decade of music really important to 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 think about the grammar of music and um one could have in the last 10, 15 years, the feeling, ah, the music is at, at, at the end and there is no music anymore. And it's, it's more, more about, you know, music is going more and more towards noise and more noise and more noise. And this is the technical aspect. If you, if, if you want, if we are keeping, keep on going with this, um, with this, I, I say it's it's in a in a form. It's a terror of the new. If you if you understand the new only as a in a technical aspect, mm -hmm. then um, the music will one day get absorbed. It's it's there is, in my opinion, there is no technical aspect to find out. There is no. It's it's like colors. We cannot, we have all the shades of yellow and we cannot find more yellows. It's impossible. 
but it's not the 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 new is not about um is not about this technical aspect it's about what what are you what are you expressing in your time what is the new about your combination about your language about um what you want to say and i think there is in art we cannot compare art with with technique and this stuff because art is existence and there is nothing new about existence existence was always in this world people lived always and there is nothing new about existence and everything is new about existence because every composer is new and when he wants to something and even if it's not good it's new the only exception is when he's copying something but it's always new and the 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 the, 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 the question is how how good his craftsmanship how 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 great his artistic vision is to express himself so good that it appears to the society as something new. But it's not just the technical aspect. I think this is the most simple way to see um, something as innovative or experimental. Um, I think the, the, the biggest experiment in art is happening in the head and, and not outside of the head, you know? and. Uh, and, um, and that's why I admire also many contemporary composers, you know. I think, for example, that a guy like Lachenmann, yeah, uh, um, for me, he's a great composer because his experiment is, is, is more in the head than, than just finding out, oh, let's, let's uh, try how it, the cello is sounding when we... Uh, uh, knock the woods together or make right. blah 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 and all this stuff this is this is so simple it's yeah. the artistic uh, uh magic happening in the head which makes music out of it and um and by I experimenting this, huh? sorry <laughs> by experimenting in the head you mean also that idea of what you're challenging yourself in your own thinking yeah yeah what okay. you, the, 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 you know you can you can you can experiment by putting things together just just like um, trying this and trying and trying that and trial and error and and but yeah. this is the normal like job. cooking yeah like cooking it's it's you are doing it anyway every day I'm not selling it as an art form yeah it's not enough yeah it it, it, it you need you need a poetic aspect inside mm -hmm. of it and and, per and a personal yeah. Absolutely, a person, and it it, has, it needs a really emotional link to your personality. If this is missing, it's just an experimental game, but it's not art. Yeah. And um, you can say, yeah, it's new, but um, this is for me not a value enough. It's it's a, a, the, the, for me the value is coming with. The combination with the with your own poetics and um then something interesting is happening and that's why i'm thinking there is not really something new it's a big mistake to think about in these categories of oh this is new and and this is what happened in the classical music um, in the last especially in the last 20 years we many people were uh, listening to a chord and saying, ah, this is C minor, it's old fashioned. Ah, this is sounding like romantic. Oh, it's old fashioned. Oh, this is film music, blah, blah, blah. No, you cannot listen like this. It's it's like reading a book and, and there is written, I love you. And you say, oh, come on. This was written 100 times before. It's nothing new. So we have to stop to talk and then we have to find new words to, this is not the way how art works. Mm. This is- Ooh, um, I like and we need to, uh, we have to accept that we are people who want to talk. We, we need, there is, there is, it's not about the words, it's, uh, it's about the message. And um, I think it's so important that we learn to read the message again. Or to listen to the message, but this is really challenging, I think. Absolutely, it's challenging, but this is the fun. Uh, and, and I think this is also important about, you know, when we talk about 
the really classical music, when we hear Tchaikovsky or, or Beethoven or we hear Shostakovich, you know, Shostakovich is using the same chords like Tchaikovsky was using, but everybody is recognizing that Tchaikovsky is expressing completely something different than uh, 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 Shostakovich. And um, because it's a completely different message, it's, it's okay. not about the words and it's not about using the cello and all this stuff, it's about the notes he's writing and, and he was feeling the notes that strongly and, and the life he had during the Stalinism and, and, and you can feel it how this guy was, how he was suffering and uh, how much fear he had about his life and this is... Uh, um, it's it's manifested in his music, and and it's it will stay for all times. But it's in terms of technical innovation, it's it's not innovative. It's yeah. it's not technical innovative. But for me, it's it's really big, and uh, and and in the, but in the innovation of mind and um, in think of thoughts. It's really innovative, in my opinion. Really innovative, and 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 I think what we have to when we listen classical music is we have to understand the language again, and we have to hear very closely what's the grammar, what's the different mm -hmm. grammar of Tchaikovsky, and what's the grammar of Ravel. What is the beauty behind the Bolero, one of the most beautiful pieces I think ever written, and a music sounding so exotic and uh, like from extraterrestrial, but with normal chords. It's it, he, for example, how he used this uh, percussion, this this snare. It's so beautiful. It's not. It's it's. I I hate normally the the, the percussion uh, when somebody is making bass drums and stuff in the orchestra. I hate it. But how he's using it, it's it's like a flavor or like a parfum inside it's just oh, a reason yeah. it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's carrying you away but what is these harmonical combinations he's using this is the grammar and he found a new way of um giving us new messages and and and, and yeah that's i think this is what we have to hear more and try mm -hmm. to find out more in music and I think, I mean, would it be fair to say we also have to kind of take responsibility that our audiences get there as well, too, because, um, you know, what you say about music being a language and that we have to find our way to this language, we can't find our way to it alone as musicians, you know, we need to find it as a society. So I think that's one of the big challenges of right now, I would say, is that it's just that educational um, component think, that's not yeah, there yeah. you know I think you're absolutely right and this is a very important point because music is always also socio sociology yeah and um, I think it's not so much about education it's much more about sociology it's much about how open we are to invite other people to think that this music is also for them or not for them. I think music is, um, you know, when you hear yeah. pop music, they're, they're using also all these chords we are using. Yeah, sure, we are a little bit more complicated, one can say, and, um, but I think the music we are composing is not a music um, for, just special interest people. Yeah, it's no, it's, no. it's 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 um, normal people can listen to Bach and uh, enjoy it and 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 get lost into it and into Mozart and into Tchaikovsky and also into Shostakovich and Britain and when they go further also in Thomas Ades or Sammy or Sammy Musa and in my Musa. music and in many uh, other uh, great composers uh, music yeah. they can get lost to it, but. They, 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 they need to get the feeling that they are not foreigners there. Yes, that they're safe. And, and, and I think what, what, what our problem is, is that classical music has the image that it's just for a 
you, you know, very educated, very high quality, um, good uh, people with good and, and uh, educated and yeah. with time or with. Yeah. 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 You know, there is a different sociology, uh, sociology than other people. And, and, and also when you think about the contemporary music, it's even worse because it's academic. Yes. If you have a festival of contemporary music, and this is a big problem for the contemporary music because you cannot find the differences any of them, each of them anymore. They're just getting commissions of 10 minutes, then they have to write a piece, and then the next guys come with 10 minutes, the next guys come with 10 minutes, and you hear dum, 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 dum. Yeah. You go to a festival, you hear all this stuff, and it, it's not open. It's not in, inside of the music society and 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 it's so close and even the classical people think ah this is the academic world this is the contemporary experimental modern music it's nothing for us it's uh it's framed in a special festival and uh, when this festival is i don't go there i'm going only when schubert is there and i'm going there you know it's too much um um uh, closed well, it's bordered it's bordered yeah exactly it's bordered yeah. it's too yeah. bordered yeah. and it, it's it, it, we need more uh, it, it, everything has to flow it, to each other and get combined mm -hmm. and um and i think this is something which the classical music needs really badly um yeah. to to take it a little bit easier, to make different programs, to combine more music, to confront the people, and um, also don't be afraid to touch the people. And, yeah. um, and um, you know, it's music. In the end, it's music. And uh, the worst, what can happen is that somebody is sitting in a concert and is getting bored, and this is happening all the time. And... Um, and um, this is the worst which can happen. And the greatest what can happen is somebody is finding some music and, and it's making his life more rich. And um, I think that the, the most important is that we find in, in music the, the voice of our time. And the voice of our time is written by the composers of our time and the musicians. And and, 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 perf and performed by the mm -hmm. musicians of our time and brought to life by the musicians of our time. And, and um, I, I think this, this has to be the, the most important point in classical music to, to think about how we can bring more of our time into the concert halls. Beautiful. That's, I think, the most important point. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah. We talk very much always about, I know I'm, I'm sitting in some juries and we have always talks about how we can bring classical music more to the people and they are thinking about making concerts in rural areas and uh, in schools. And, yeah, but it's also about the music. It's not only about you're playing in the Hauptbahnhof or in the central station or you're playing in a, in a, in a terminal. It's not about confronting only the people is also about allowing the voice of your time to speak and then people get attracted and seduced by the music because um, why people are listening so much pop and 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 and, and um, uh, popular music is, yeah. is because it's it's more zeitgeist for them and they, they feel more getting somebody's talking to them, maybe in a very simple way, maybe some, sometimes in a more complex way, but they have the feeling of getting, having a, a stronger connection to them. And that, that's, I think, our job to find out more zeitgeist in the classical music. Then we will have a bigger audience, I'm sure. Arash, thank you so much. For sharing your thoughts and all of this thank it's you. been thank very you. i talked so much um, yeah. so many uh, so many <laughs> things to think about and and new ideas and it's it's really a pleasure to have you here. thank you for your questions thank you thank you <laughs> i i think i could keep talking to you for an hour but <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> probably have to let our listeners you know 
Go and have dinner or something. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. It was really great talking to you. All the best. And I hope we run into each other in Berlin. Definitely. Definitely. I'm sure. (laughs) Good. Thank you. Then take care, Arash. Yeah, you